What's going on everybody? It's Smitty back. Hope you're doing fantastic. Today we have an interesting video that comes to us from the Bedrock Add-ons Discord server. And in this Discord server, what actually happened is that a group of Mojang employees got together and decided to open a discussion post where they answered questions from the community. And these questions all had to do with the new deferred rendering, or in other words, they discussed the future of shaders on Minecraft Bedrock. A lot of insight was shared. I found it pretty interesting, so I thought, hey, let's make a video on it, share it with the community, as the deferred rendering is definitely one of the coolest features that Mojang is working on. So really quick, the Mojang employees that were active in this thread were Kayla, Maddie, Sam, AJ, Brian, and Mike. And yes, these are official employees, so this is a 100% legit question and answer, or Q&A as they call it. Let's get into the questions. How long has the deferred rendering pipeline been in development? What were the challenges in making this pipeline? AJ responded saying, The deferred pipeline has been in development in various forms since 2020. Parts of it were born out of optimizations to the RTX pipeline, but other parts were born out of the pipeline used for Minecraft Legends. Development started in early March of 2022. So this really puts into perspective Perspective, how much work and how long it takes to roll out such a big feature to the official game multiple years of development and we just recently got it released to be tested on Minecraft preview back in August so I think it's safe to say that we have a little bit further to go before official deferred shaders are launched on Minecraft bedrock publicly will any platforms not be supported there's no official announcements right now on what will or what will not be supported as mentioned in another thread we aim to make deferred as widely available as possible on devices that can support it but ensure that the visuals and performance are where they should be for a good playing experience i honestly find this response kind of concerning a straightforward yes we plan to release deferred rendering on every device would have been much better because now we are left to speculate if it'll come to like playstation for example but i guess when you take into account the different specs that every single console and individual phone has it's probably smart to not promise absolutes as a company because then if you don't deliver people are going to be upset so i guess a very good pr answer here well done maddie Will Deferred be getting a trailer anytime soon? Good question. It's still too early to think about marketing materials. Right now our focus is just building these features and getting feedback from you all, but I'd love to see community made trailers, hint hint. So we can kind of just build on our timeline here. Clearly we still have a long ways to go with this deferred rendering feature. It's just nice to see that the employees are focusing on getting feedback from players. So now we'll move on to a few questions that focus on the features of deferred rendering. One of the biggest questions people have was asked by Elsa, better water. Deferred now still uses the default water from the initial release in the preview and there are only a few changes. So will there be additional features such as screen space reflection, caustic waves, and underwater effects which are much better than before? And Maddie responded saying yes, we are definitely working on updating the water lighting model and other effects in deferred these are some great suggestions and would love to hear more about what other effects and controls you'd like to have with the water in the deferred preview. So then people gave their suggestions about what they'd like to be able to edit with the water and AJ responded, these are all great ideas for water improvement. I'm happy to say that many of these are already on our roadmap. Caustics, noise, volumetric rays, reflections, refractions, and that's just crazy. That's going to be one of the biggest deferred pack moments is when we are able to edit water as water is so abundant and it's gonna look so nice eventually but a big confirmation there from the devs will we see items getting material support items are now the last major thing to not receive any official PBR support in deferred it is still possible to give items PBR capabilities with some workarounds but will it be officially supported AJ said yes this is something we are working on and don't forget about particles those will also be getting PBR support as well likely sooner than later so pack creators will be able to edit items and particles it's just gonna be ridiculous flaky asked the question are entities planned to be involved such as conditionally shining flashlights from players glowing mobs etc I just imagine a lethal company style flashlight through the fog in Minecraft and get excited now that would be really cool to see in my opinion but I love
love this. We just got a straight up answer from AJ. No, we do not have plans to include spotlights or attachable lights to entities at this point in time. Thank you for your suggestion. So although it may not be the answer we're looking for, I appreciate the honesty, AJ. <laughs> well done. Are there any plans to fix volumetric fogs that use height rather than uniformity from blinding you? To add more context, when you set up a fog and use the height parameters, rather than being uniform, their thickness goes to the maximum upon entering the biome, then fades into the proper height the further you go in. Is this intentional or a bug? Interpolation at biome transitions aren't the most polished right now. What you're describing is likely a bug. We'll be working on more polished transitions closer to final release. I remember when the volumetric fog feature was added to the deferred packs, and in my opinion, it is a bit goofy how the fog looks and works between biomes, so it's good to see the devs are working on making that more smooth. Dimension-based configuration. I think it would be cool if blocks could have three PBR textures and config, one for each dimension, this would help enhance each dimension to be unique. Brian responded saying, We're currently working on being able to provide unique configurations per biome, and I believe these will allow you to configure properties unique to other dimensions, like the nether or the end dimensions. We're still exploring how lighting will work in other dimensions, with a big focus on the overworld presently. And then Kayla also said, And as we also look at custom biomes and custom dimensions, no timeline or promises, just things on the list, we will also consider how deferred graphics will be utilized by these creators. So that's actually really exciting to hear, being able to customize rendering effects on blocks per biome. I got a lot of respect to add-on creators who decide to edit all that. That's a lot of customization, but a great feature to hear that's in the works. Data-driven renderer folder. Will the renderer folder be exposed for us to use in resource packs? Doing so will allow many unique packs and configurations for creators to experiment with. And AJ responded saying, not the renderer folder itself, but there will be more data driving capabilities that we expose to resource packs over time, yes. And then Poggy said, okay, how about the files that handle tone mapping? Yes, at least a subset of these parameters will be folded into the upcoming color grading feature. All I want is darker shadows and I'm happy. Split tone color grading should help you accomplish that. So more customization coming if Poggy's happy, we're all happy. Light contrast and or saturation for the sun and moon. Will Deferred ever see the likes of contrast and or saturation control for all lights? For example, increasing the contrast and or saturation for colors from the sun and moon to have more bright and or a somewhat vibrant color or increasing saturation for colors to stand out. I have noticed that the colors from the sun are quite dull, and not even changing the tone mapper helps a bit. AJ responded saying, Not per light source, but like Vecca mentioned, we will be doing it on the full scene as part of tone mapping, and why stop at contrast and saturation? We are working on full HDR color grading suite, complete with contrast, saturation, gain, offset, and split tone grading. This feature will be data drivable in your resource packs. Oh my, so there are just so many features that are yet to come out for these deferred packs. Different styles for deferred. Will there ever be styles for creators to choose from, such as a cartoony style with some cell shades for example? And then Sam responded saying, as Kayla mentioned in another answer, the focus of the team right now is on cross-platform features. Nothing to discuss today around different shader styles. Alright, we've discussed a lot of features about Deferred, so to sum it up, Big Eddie Spaghetti hops on and asks, How many features are left for Deferred? Is there many, or does Deferred have most of its features already? And then Maddie responded saying, There are some hints across the other threads, but I'll make a cheat sheet here. Right now, in the works to share with you, we have color grading, water lighting, movement, subsurface scattering, reflections, and texture set support for items and particles. AJ is right, we're definitely working on getting all the features out before really hammering at optimizations. No timeline to share right now, 
but definitely on our roadmap. And there you have it, just ridiculous how much stuff there is still to come for these deferred packs. The main thing to take away is that Mojang is working on getting all these features implemented, and then they're going to work on the optimization and hopefully make deferred rendering available on all platforms. The final question I want to go over today was asked by Rich Hart, who said, what is the weirdest rendering bug you have seen while developing the deferred rendering pipeline? Screenshots are welcome, but an explanation is sufficient. AJ responded saying, we've had many over the years. And then the Mojang employees actually showed screenshots of bugs they've encountered while developing the deferred pipeline. Just a cool little insight there to the process. There were even more questions asked on the Discord server, but I'll just leave a link down below as they're pretty in-depth technical questions. So if you have more interest in this topic, link to the Bedrock add-ons Discord server down below. But thank you all so much for watching. We have a lot to look forward to with these deferred shaders, and I'll be sure to keep you all up to date. It's been Smitty. Until the next one, have a great rest of your day. Peace out.